Hey guys, uh, I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm going to do a little recap of my tournament on Pickwick Lake for the Bass Nation Championship. So, <clears throat> a lot of you guys have been following along, kind of know what happened at the end anyways. Um, I wanted to get this video done a little sooner, but I just, I've been dealing with a lot of other stuff since then, which is all good stuff, trying to get things sorted out for next year, so... I'll just do a quick rundown of kind of my practice each tournament day, um, how each day went, uh, how I prepared, and then give a little rundown at the end of, you know, what's ahead, what's in store for me next year. Uh, it's pretty exciting stuff, so um, I don't know how long the video is going to be, but I'll try to uh, run through it as best I can because the last recap video I did, I got a lot of good feedback on it. So I just uh, thought I'd do it again, and you guys can hear the whole story and what all happened. So, a um, little backstory on this tournament in particular: how I got there. Uh, in 2019, I won the Wisconsin State tournament on the Chippewa Flowage, which qualified me for the state team. And each state allows 10 boaters and 10 non-boaters to represent their state at the regional level. So this year, the regional was on Vermilion in Tower, Minnesota which I also won, um, to get to the national tournament, you have to be the top person in your state at the regional tournament. So from that regional, I think there was nine states, one person in the boater division and one person in the non-boater division qualified from each state to go to the national tournament, which was on Pickwick here last month, um, or late this month, whatever it was. So uh, that's how I got to go to this national tournament. So at this national tournament, there was 48 anglers, uh, you know, one from each state minus Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, so 48 boaters, 48 non-boaters. And then uh, the defending champion, who was Cody Holland, he also got to fish the tournament too. Typically, there's other countries there also, but with the COVID stuff, they, they, they weren't allowed to come or whatever. So there was a little smaller field. Um, at this tournament, if you got in the top three, you got an invite to the Bassmaster Classic, the 2021 Bassmaster Classic on Lake Ray Roberts in Texas in March. Um, if you won the tournament, then you would get an Elite Series berth and go to the Classic. So there was a lot on the line. And to be honest with you, when this tournament, when I knew I qualified, I was really excited, but I kind of didn't put a lot of emphasis on it earlier on because you know of what was happening in the opens I was doing well in contention to make it in the opens to the elite series so I, I was concentrating on that and then I talked to my buddy Josh Miller and he's like dude there's only you know 50 boats and you get in the top three you go to the classic if you win you go to the elites and the classics like you might want to kind of put a little more emphasis on this tournament so I thought about it and I was like yeah I probably should so before the Cherokee event I went to Pickwick and practiced for four and a half days um, the cutoff was October 26 so it kind of worked out well where I could go just a few days early for for Cherokee and get some time on the water at least so I went out there practiced didn't do that good but mainly I wanted to run around the lake and kind of check out the areas I thought would be could potentially be good in the fall, you know, if them small most started to migrate. Um, and just find areas I thought might look good if the water water cooled down and things changed. Uh, and honestly, in that practice, I maybe caught 12 to 15 keepers in all the days I was there. Didn't figure a whole lot out, but um, I at least got on the water and, you know, got to run around a little bit, see what it was all about. So... I went down there to pre-practice. We could practice two day, two full days before this tournament, which I think the tournament was the 11th through the 13th of November. So we could practice the 7th and 8th, and then we couldn't go the 9th, and then we got half a day on the 10th. So really, you know, two and a half days of official practice, um, and then we fished the tournament. So in those two and a half days, I went out. I kind of checked the stuff I thought would be good. 
Uh, Matt Burns was with me. He was the co-angler champion on Vermillion, uh, also representing Wisconsin. And he was great in the boat for... He told me, he's like, dude, we got to figure out how to catch them. You do what you're going to do, and I'm just going to do different stuff and try to figure out a different way for you to catch them and for me to catch them. So it was perfect. Perfect guy you want when you're practicing. He... He stayed out of my way. He did what you know, did different things, and honestly, he figured out the one cast on a spot that I had found. But he figured out the cast that I needed to make um, to catch him there. In the first five minutes we got there on practice, he caught a four pounder, and honestly, making a cast I wouldn't have made. So without that, without him in the boat, I probably don't figure out the spot that ended up being very, you know. I mean, I leaned on it every day. I, I got my start on it and weighed a lot of fish off of it. So um, it was great having Matt in the boat. I mean, he helped out a ton. So after that first day of practice, we figured that spot out, you know, caught a few fish here and there, didn't really get much going. Second day, once again, I thought I had something going way up by the dam, but I just wasn't that confident. It was a real short bite window, really hard to fish. Um, I didn't feel real great after after day two. So day three, which is only a half day, I was like, I'm just going to scrap all of what I've been trying to do fishing that heavy current and go look for some largemouth. And it was kind of a crappy, rainy, overcast day. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go into some creeks, throw top water, throw some spinner baits, just try to find an area where there might be some largemouth. So the first creek I go into this last day of practice, I catch like a five and a half pound largemouth on, on a top water, on a spook, um, fishing the way I like to fish in the fall, trying to, you know, intersect fish migrating out of creeks into the main river. It was the perfect setup. There was nobody else in there ideal isolated wood you know channel swing banks flat bank clay bank everything i like to see you know in the fall when them fish are transitioning so i went in there caught that big one had a few other blow-ups felt like if you know i could get maybe get one or two big ones in there if the, if the situation was right um, and then on the way down to the next creek i saw there's these big like bridge barge tie-ups i mean giant circular cement things that come out of the water and we were driving by. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. There's 30 of them. And one particular, there was. we were driving by it. And I was like, man, look at that. You could see the fish busting minnows on that pillar. So we went over there. I made one cast. Lost a nice one. Don't know what it was. Next cast, I caught a nice spot of bass. Um, so I'm like, okay, it might, it might be worth, you know, checking out. I knew it was bait related. But I thought, you know, if them bait are around, maybe I could swing in here and get a fish or two. So... I fished the rest of the day. We could only fish till noon or 2 o'clock. Something a short, short window. Um, didn't find much else that day until the last, like, 10 minutes. I found a, a spot kind of close to takeoff where I caught two keepers in literally the last 10 minutes of practice. So I thought, okay, I can come expand on this area if I need to, and, and uh, I think I can catch some in here. So that was kind of it. Uh, first day of the tournament... Uh, I went, I actually didn't start on the spot where I anticipated I was going to catch him, that spot that Matt kind of figured that cast out. I started a little below it on another spot where I had caught some big ones previously when I was up there in pre-practice. I actually don't think I even fished it before this one, but I just knew there was big ones around there. And I honestly, I, I really figured no one else would figure out that other spot. Even if someone fished it, they weren't going to make the right cast. So I started on the one spot, didn't catch any, ran up to the spot, Matt and I dialed in, and I caught four keepers in the first seven, eight casts. A couple good ones, um, and then they quit biting. But I had a good start. The first hour and 15 minutes, I had four good keepers. You know, four for probably, I suppose, 10 pounds. You know, all quality fish. Then I ran around, didn't get much, fished some other current stuff, didn't get them, and then I ran down to that pillar, and first cast I caught a three and a half pound largemouth, which was a big, you know, nice surprise, so that gave me five. Next cast I caught another one over three, um, and then I caught one more keeper. This is at probably 11 o'clock. We weighed in at two o'clock, um, so that gave me what I had. I never caught another keeper the rest of the day, and I, I went up in that creek, 
where I thought I could get a big largemouth. I fished a, an hour and a half in there and I had one really big one blow up, but it just didn't get the bait. I missed them. So that was kind of day one. I had 14 pounds, 11 ounces, I think. I was sitting in sixth place, a couple pounds off the lead, but the weights were real tight. And the way it sounded, nobody was catching a lot of fish. So I felt pretty good about, you know, if I could duplicate that, I would be in good position. So day two, I went out, went right to the spot where I caught those four the first day to get started. Caught two keepers right away. Not big ones, but nice ones, you know, 16 inches. Uh, 16, 16 and a half inches, they got to be 15 to keep. So I got a good start. Um, once again, they quit biting, right? You know, I had about a 15 minute window where they bit. I caught the two, got me started. Started running around, went to the pillar, didn't get anything. You know, fished a couple other spots, didn't get anything. And then I stopped on a spot, this little hump out in the middle of the river where I had caught a couple here and there in practice, no big ones, but I thought, you know, I'm close to it. I'm going to stop on it and just take a few casts. And I caught a really nice spot of bass right away, like a three-pounder. So that was number three. And then um, I started dragging the Carolina rig, and I caught about a 15-and-a-half-inch smallmouth, skinny one, but it was a keeper. That was number four. And then that was it. Fished a bunch of other stuff, didn't get them. Um, went up, fished the smallmouth stuff again, didn't catch any, um, which I knew I just didn't have faith in doing that in the after the morning bite I just could never get it dialed in so I went to that area where I had found the last day of practice where I'd caught a couple nice largemouth and I'm like I, I know they're in there I just got to figure out how to catch them like I said I didn't spend any time in there so I didn't really know what was going on I just figured if I got two hours I went in there about quarter to 12 so I had till two o'clock if I got two hours I'll figure out I should be able to figure out how to catch one more keeper anyways so I ran up there, and it just so happened that I pulled up at the right time, and they had bait pushed up against the bank, and they were they were you know feasting on them pretty hard. And I caught, I think my first cast, I caught a three and a half pound largemouth, which gave me you know my limit. Next cast, I caught another nice spot that culled, caught a couple short ones. You know, on that day I was plagued with losing fish. I was getting them fish on a jerk bait and. I was just having problems landing them, um, and I figured out what, I mean, I know it was a color-related problem, because when it was cloudy, I was catching them on a light color, you know, jerk bait. it was chartreuse and white, and when the sun came out, it was just, they weren't eating it as good, so I switched over to a more natural color, you know, Tennessee shad, it's like a silver, um, once I switched over to that, I started to catch them, and I ended up culling two or three more times in a short span um, with nice fish. And I didn't know exactly what I had for weight. I didn't weigh any of the fish. I was just throwing them in there um, and calling as I went. Uh, but I was basically running around that area. I never Places I'd never fished. And if something looked right, I would stop. And every time I did that, I caught one or two. Um, and so I felt like, you know, when I had that, you know, a decent, I think I had 13, 12 the second day and moved, I moved into second place, but I felt like, okay, if I can get them smallmouth in the morning, get a good start like I had been, um, I can come in here from 11 o'clock till two and just grind it out all day and figure it out as I go, fish more new stuff. I knew I had a couple baits to catch them. Um, I'm like, I can come in here and I can maybe get another decent bag. But I needed to get a good start in the morning. That was the key key thing for all my days, to get a few fish in the box, call me down. Because, it was, I mean, I caught seven keepers the first day, and I think I caught eight or nine the second day. Like I said, the second day I was plagued with, I mean, I lost, I don't know how many I lost the second day, but it was more than you want to lose. Um, but I still recovered and got a good bag. So I had in my mind, you know, I was thinking about, I want to make the classic. That was the main goal because I was only six ounces behind Blake Sylvester, who was leading. And the way he was talking, he wasn't catching a lot of fish either. So I thought, all right, you can fish kind of conservative and go for the classic. And if you bring in, you know, 12 pounds, you're probably going to have a really good chance of making that. But you're also in... Um, 
position to win this thing. So go out, fish them smallmouth till 10 o'clock. Even if you don't think you can catch them after that first flurry, go out and do it because that's how you're going to win. And I told Blake that at takeoff. You know, he was kind of talking, not smack, but he was trying to, you know, he was talking to his his fans that were there and he was saying how he was going to crush them and he was going to win, which I don't blame. He's confident, but he, you know, he was kind of, not he didn't intimidate me and I don't know if that's what he was trying to do but I told him I said dude if I'm going to win this thing I'm going to win it with smallmouth and it's going to be in the first you know hour and a half that's how it's going to happen for me so I thought about that and I'm like I'm going to go fish till 10 even if I don't catch any I'm going to go fish till 10 if I don't get them up there then I'm just going to run around like I have been and fish for largemouth so take off I've got no co-angler with me, which was great um, for how I was fishing. It just gave me all the space I needed. I could cast wherever I wanted. You know, in that heavy current, it's really hard to position the boat and make the right cast and get the bait to do what you need it to do when you have somebody else in the boat. Not that it's their fault, but just it just made it a lot easier. So I ran up to my first spot, caught three in the first five minutes, you know, honestly, probably before everybody else was done running to their spots. So I had three okay ones, 16 inches, maybe two to two and a half pounders, and they quit biting like normal. So the current was really ripping that day, like seemed like harder than I had, it had been any other day. I didn't look at any of the numbers, you know, you can look at the numbers of how much water they're pulling, but I don't know what number it needs to be at. I just went out there and fished in the current like I do on the Mississippi. So... There was another spot, the second spot I'd been fishing, it was flowing so heavy that I started about 100 yards above where I wanted to fish. And as I was kind of drifting my way back to it, I caught like a 12 or 13 inch smallmouth. And I just marked a waypoint because I was, you know, even on spot lock, you're still, I'd say it's a slow drift when you're on spot lock. And I got a 112 Fortrex or Ultrex and... I've got battleborn lithium batteries. I mean, I got all the power in the world, but that current, you you couldn't stay in one spot, period. So I marked that waypoint, fished down to the spot I wanted to fish. Uh, didn't catch any there. I'm like, I better idle back up to that spot and just, just see if there's anything going on on there. Uh, because in that current, in my opinion, when you catch a fish, it not very often is it random. You know, it's there for a reason. There's something there that's making that current change to position them so i idled back up there and i caught two or three right away and i think i might have caught i think my fourth one was a small keeper 16 incher then the next one was a three pounder which is a really good one um but like i said you'd you'd get maybe two or three casts per drift and then you'd have to idle back up there so i kind of i had i had a limit you know i caught two keepers there pretty quick Started to kind of understand what was going on, figured out the ca- exact cast I needed to make. So I would essentially idle up, wait for the boat to drift into the right position, make that cast. And when I made the right cast, I knew I was pretty certain I was going to get a bite when I felt that swim bait doing what it needed to do. And then I, ca- I caught a 365, which was a big one, called, idled back up. Um, I think I caught a couple other ones, in, you know, a couple two and a half pounders. Had a good bag, fourteen and a half pounds or something, and I was still catching them. But I just felt like I wasn't getting down far enough. I was throwing a half ounce head, um, so I tucked behind this little point, tied on a three quarter ounce jig head. I hadn't thrown it all week, hadn't thrown it in practice. Um, tied on a three quarter ounce jig head, threaded on a fresh swim bait, idled back up there. First cast I made with it, I caught a five and a quarter pounder, which was, I mean, that gave me, I don't even know how much, it was 16 and three quarter, close to 17 pounds. So I called, idled back up there again, and I caught a four pounder, next cast. So then that gave me, you know, I don't know, I had a 485 I had caught earlier. I mean, that gave me almost 21 pounds, and it was pretty early. It was maybe 930. Um, so I had, at that point, I had a 520, a 485, a 396, a 365, and then like a one just under three pounds. So all really good fish. And then they kind of, they quit biting. But I was, you know, I'm like, man, I probably made the classic. 
I probably got a really good chance of winning because this bag, I got a bigger bag than anybody's had throughout the week by a long shot. So it was, you know, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and in my mind, it's like, do I really want to run around? I don't want to get that far away from takeoff. Uh, you know, I just didn't know what to do. So I went in, fished them largemouth for a little bit, caught a few, didn't, you know, I'm like, I ain't going to get a bigger one in here than what I got. So I ran down, fished that pillar again, nothing. Fished a couple other spots, didn't get any. Ran back up towards the dam, fished a few other smallmouth spots. I didn't get anything. And it was about quarter to one. I'm like, I got to go back over there and take a couple more casts. You know, because I was really close to going into the marina and just calling it a day because what I've, I've had some stuff happening lately, breaking down, just stuff happening. And that gets in your mind of you don't want to throw away that chance. So I'm like, I'm going to go up there and fish for 15, 20 minutes and see if I can get another one. So rolled in there about quarter to one, 10 to one, something like that. We waited at two o'clock. First cast in there, I got a 465. So I threw out a 293 for a 465. So then I was pumped, 22 pounds. I'm like, man, that is a giant bag. Like I got to make another drift. So I go back up there. Next cast, I caught a 491 and threw out a 365. Then I was like, holy crap. The, man, they something crazy has got to happen for them to beat me. And then, I mean, I, I can't even describe the emotions going through me. I mean, everything you can think of, I was just, and I can keep my composure pretty well. I've fished a lot of tournaments, a lot of high-pressure tournaments, and I was, like, excited, nervous, anxious, you know, wanted to get back and make sure I was safe, you know, didn't have something crazy happen. So I made one more drift, I think, and at this point it's, like, quarter after one. Um, and I'm like, I'm done. I, I got to go back. I got, I can't, I just, I got to go back. If somebody beats me with what I got, then hats off because I got a giant bag of fish. So I go back, check in, um, sat in the marina for the last 45 minutes and, uh, put all my rods away, texted my wife, told her to make sure she watched the way in, made a little post on Facebook and, uh, sat there and waited to weigh in and i knew when people had come in like i talked to blake right when he came in he said he's a, he was exciting he had almost 15 pounds and then you know i told him what i had and kind of brought him down to earth a little bit but he still was you know he figured he still was going to make the classic um so we weighed in i ended up winning the tournament you know hopefully you watched the weigh in and seen how it all went down um ended up winning by like eight pounds so, you know, I, I got an awesome trophy, Brian Kershaw Memorial Trophy, which means a lot to me. Uh, I've known about that story since I was a kid. Uh, so, you know, probably the most meaningful trophy I've ever got. It is the most meaningful trophy I've ever got. Um, so that was kind of the tournament uh, and my practice, how it all went down. I know that's kind of a quick rundown. There's a lot more stuff that happened, but I don't want to make this video too crazy long, even though it's already 23 minutes long. So with that win, I qualify for the 2021 Bassmaster Classic, qualify for the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series, which is what I've been trying to do through the Open Series. Um, technically, I don't have to fish the last Open on Lay Lake, December 3rd through 5th, but I'm going to do it because A, they wouldn't refund my money, and B... I want to finish what I started and I would really like to be in the top four in points there just because to make a point like, hey, I made it through the nation, which I'm really proud of making it through the nation, and but I also made it through the opens. So that's kind of my goal. I leave for that day after Thanksgiving, go down there, practice four and a half days, um, and then I'm going to come back for about a week. And then I'm driving to Ray Roberts in Texas to practice for the Classic. That goes off limits uh, January 1st. So I'm going to get down there, at least go out, get around the lake, check it out, see what, what's going on there, just to have a little bit of an idea. You know, the classic, I think you get three and a half days of practice, and that's it. So go down there and do that, and hopefully uh, hopefully do good on Lay Lake, and then I, you know, hopefully do good in the classic and get the ball rolling in 2021. So a lot's been happening. I've been talking with a lot of, you know, companies, which is good. Um, doing a lot of interviews, 
there's you know I did an interview for Bassmaster Radio, so that that'll be on the website or Spotify, and then I did one with Hellabass, uh, with Rich Lindgren a couple nights ago, and that if you want a really detailed breakdown of both what him because he did really well too, he missed the cut by two ounces, so if you want a real good detailed breakdown of what I was doing, what he was doing, kind of how we both approached that tournament, go check that out on. On YouTube, if you just type in Hellabass, H-E-L-L-A Bass, um, it'll come up. He's got a lot of other good stuff too, but that that's like an hour and a half, you know, live stream that we did, and it was really cool. I mean, you we, we went over a lot of stuff, and honestly, I talked about a lot of stuff in that that I usually don't share with people. So um, check that out, um, and I'll keep everybody posted on what's going on i'll keep doing these recaps try to do a little you know more stuff on facebook instagram uh to keep everybody in the loop so uh thanks for everyone's support it's been it's been awesome Uh, i know i say that all the time and i know a lot of people say that but for me personally that support those messages that i get from people uh it really means a lot because of you know what's on the line for me uh Everybody who sends me a message, I mean, I'll, I'll, if I, I tried to respond to every single one, I think I did. If I missed you, sorry, I didn't try to, but uh, I really enjoy seeing those messages. Even if it's something short, uh, it really means a lot to me. So keep following along. I also have Hot Zone hats in production. So if you want a Hot Zone hat, they'll probably be up for sale here pretty quick once I get them. Uh, if you want one of them, shoot me a message. We'll figure something out. Um, so yeah, with that, that's kind of the recap. Appreciate the support. Keep following along. Thanks a lot.